if you had to start again from zero, what would you do? I would log myself back in this room where I am right now <laughs> and just <laughs> circle. record a ton of videos. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's the best way to do it, to be honest. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Youth of Business Academy podcast with your hosts, Ron and George. Today, we have a very special guest, the one and only Yuri Van Hoffigen. This dude is only 23 years old, living it up in Dubai and pulling in serious money with his YouTube automation game. We're talking anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000 a month, and that's not a joke. But here's a twist. Yuri isn't sweating over video creation. Nope. He's got his channels running on autopilot. This guy is a YouTube automation wizard. And by the way, Yuri's a big deal at the YouTube Business Academy, always sharing his tricks and making everyone feel hyped about the YouTube game. I'm stoked to sit down with him today, pick his brain, and spill the beans on all things YouTube automation. Yuri, first question right away. Have you gotten your driving license yet? <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting question. I'm pretty sure the audience is definitely interested in that one. The answer would be no. So that's still a no. Okay, you guys, please no. Down below and reach out to Yuri and tell him that I think it's about the time that he needs to get his driving license. I guess it is right. There's so many people that keep coming back to it, like also my friends and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know. Never really how needed it. So I didn't really get into it. How are you, bro? I'm all right. How are you guys doing? Been a while. Yeah. Been a while. Yeah. Well, we, we, we called uh, like uh, two weeks back or something. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, we've been. That's, that, that's already a month ago. Nah. <laughs> yeah, Could I be. was in Thailand. It's like six weeks ago already. Uh, Time flies. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, been a while. So, what have you been up to, man? Tell us. I mean, a lot of things actually. Like, I feel like the last podcast that we had. Obviously, we talked in between, but the last podcast is like over a year ago, right? I think yeah. maybe like November, that. October, twenty twenty two. So it's been a year. So obviously, in that whole period, uh, quite a lot has happened. But recently, just uh yeah just starting a few different channels obviously a lot happening in the search space itself i mean you guys are fully aware of that with the invalid traffic thing that happened so making a few changes now to the overall strategy that i have um changed a few beliefs i always thought it would be best to have like let's say two very big channels but nowadays with that invalid traffic thing i feel like it's better to have a lot of smaller channels so i'm kind of trying to get into that um but yeah but yeah it's a general question but a lot going on obviously yeah yeah and what do you consider small channels like till 5k or 6k or yeah like three three thousand up to five thousand i think that would be the ideal because selling as well for example if i want to sell the channels i have now and i, I was actually trying a month ago or so uh message a few friends that have quite some money that also yeah. do youtube or just other businesses as well but they're like yeah i mean it's a great channel very stable this and that but it's hard to pay like 200k for just for one channel where maybe they know that invalid traffic thing is around or even without it right just paying 200k or 250k for some youtube channel with some uploads is yeah. is a bit hard to do whereas with 3000 and you sell it for like a i don't know between 12 up to like 20 month multiple it's it's a lot more yeah accessible for a lot of people so mm -hmm. yeah kind of going towards free up to 5k monthly revenue yeah yeah i see uh, then do you also feel like building up those channels to 3 to 5k is different than building up to like 20 or 30k a month or is it like exactly the same strategy but just spreading it amongst more channels yeah i think so i think there's not that much of a difference maybe the process in terms of how fast it will go is going to be different if you start yeah. them from scratch up until 5k Maybe it's going to take you longer than from 5K to 10K, I think, because you already got that momentum, channel authority, this and that. Then it's just the yeah, the cost of whether it's worth it to you to to risk it, to have a big channel like that, or rather have a few smaller ones. Because one of my channels in August this year, it also got hit with the invalid traffic thing. That one was doing like 15K a month. I think last month it did 16K. In August, maybe like 13, 14 and yeah. then the traffic or the invalid traffic thing happened. And then it ju you just lose like 10K a month just from one channel. So if yeah. it happens to two of your big channels or more, then you lose so much income at once. If you have 10 channels that do 3K, you got the same total revenue, but then maybe one of them or two of yeah. them, hopefully, knock on wood, will be affected. 
And then you only lose like, I don't know, 10%, 20% of your yeah. earnings rather than like 50 instantly. Don't so yeah, that put was all of your eggs like in that. one basket, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. If you see the image of Metics Media that he shared on Twitter, yeah. like it's crazy that that dip. But like, what about what about yeah. keyword research? How how is that? Like, whoa, where are you sitting with this? Because we talked a little mm -hmm. bit about this before. How is that for yeah. you? Uh, I guess. Well, I don't know. Like when I started in 2020, right? I was doing it day in day out. In the beginning, it was easy. Then sometimes it started to get harder. I mean, you guys probably know as well. There are days where you find like so many of them very easily and then the yeah. next day you're struggling to find 10 yeah. of them but yeah these days it i don't know i find it so easy to find a lot of them like there's either like there's more stuff to be made with the ai stuff and this and that yeah. they're just more topics but i'm definitely not struggling to to find a lot of keywords these days whether it just be with the search bar whether it be with help of vidIQ, looking at other channels there is so much out there. I don't know, but I feel like it's gone a lot easier to find keywords that do very well. I'm not sure if you guys have been doing research the last uh, two days, but there's this <laughs> new thing, uh, Fortnite, like Lego Fortnite or something. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't game, so I don't know exactly what it is. Yeah, maybe it's just the integration with Lego and Fortnite. But you, sh you guys should take a look. There are channels out there that get like 1,500 views per hour on like 10 videos at just one channel. Then a bunch of them are like a couple hundred views per hour. So a few channels that are diving into that trend now are probably pulling a couple hundred bucks a day yeah. just with that topic alone. And that's just one topic. So yeah, yeah I, I feel like it's gotten easier over time because there's just much more to make videos about. Do you yeah. have any useful resources or tools for the people listening uh, where you kind of start your research process? Because we talk about it that it kind of, you go into this, it's more like a getting into the flow state, right? Like you start going mm -hmm. around, browsing the internet, looking at this yeah. here and da, 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 da. But like, what's the, and where do you start initially to do your keyword research? Like how, like you open up the laptop, you have your morning coffee or whatever. Like how do you, how, how do you yeah, start so, with that? Mm -hmm. What I normally do? Well, actually it depends. I'm going to give the answer what I normally do. It's probably not uh, the thing that everyone should follow all the time. So what yeah. I normally do, I go to the office and then I just sign into the studio and then I check the channels of revenue. So just to make sure everything is all right, then when I'm going to get into keyword research, I'll go to revenue again, and then I'll either uh, filter on one specific day, probably the most recent day. Mm -hmm. And then you have the list appear, right? With the highest to lower rank or lower earning videos. Yeah. And then you see the topics. So I just take a look at, okay, what kind of videos are making me the most money as of right now? And then you've got topics right there. From there on, I'll kind of go down into that rabbit hole and then start researching that topic and see if it can find more. The problem with that, though, if you do that all the time, is that you're only going to go based on the initial thing. So if you now make 100 videos on topics X, Y, Z, and you keep doing what I just mentioned, you'll never go abroad that, that X, Y, Z topics that you've done initially. Yeah. So that is kind of the, the mistake you could make there. But normally, yeah. I just open up the studio see which videos have made me the most money recently, then just go from there. But like you said, I also feel like it's more of a flow state rather than step one, two, three, just do this, this, and this. Yeah. It's like I open up the the studio, I open up YouTube itself, I've got vidIQ open, I've got uh, incognito browser open, I've got, you know, like there's just so many different things. It's just you go from this to this, and then the first topic you find through your own studio gives you the idea for this topic, when you search for that, you see this channel ranking, you go to their channel, you find this. It's yeah. it's kind of all over the place, to be honest. Yeah. I don't have like a step one, two, three, four, five, just for the research specifically, let's say. Yeah. Hey, quick interruption. Do you want to learn how to make $5,000 per month on YouTube without showing your face or making any of the videos yourself? Well, if that's the case, I've put together a free video training where I show you step-by-step -step on how I make $5,000 per month so you can replicate it and do exactly the same. Click the first link down in the description of this episode and check it out. All right, back to the podcast. Yeah, I think we have the same, like you just start and you get into your used flow, like you have some certain yeah. methods that you use and once you have some keywords that start ranking, you know, like, oh, the way I research these keywords, they actually are working. But I think that's, yeah, you need to find your own way. Like it's a process of understanding keyword research rather than like following a step-by-step -step process, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also think it's, yeah, like you said as well, you kind of got to find your own way because what I did in 2020 might've worked very well back then. 
but maybe if everyone copies that exactly right yeah. now, it, it might not work as well. And then you guys, George as well, specifically with his, like the topics he was doing on his channel are kind of different. So I, I doubt that the keyword research for that was the exact same as I used to do. And then for him, it's working as well. So yeah, you can kind of yeah. go everywhere, to be honest. What's your opinion on like quality versus quantity? Like me and George have been mm -hmm. debating this so much on the past <laughs> episodes. Like what's your opinion on it? I mean, it's an interesting one, right? That's what I called you uh, about like a few weeks ago. Yeah. I don't know. Like right now I'm at a stage where I feel like everything works. Like no matter how you do it, what you do. It's <laughs> That's like, a luxury problem. Yeah. There's just That's too good. much money out there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but I feel like you guys should probably see that as well. When you're doing the research, you'll find so many channels and like all of them get like half a million views, 700k views, a million views, some of which are uploading a thousand times a month and the quality sucks. Some upload 50 times a month with good quality. I think you, Ron, you upload like 60 times a month, right? With like yeah. decent quality. That also works. So it's like whatever approach, most of them seem to work right now as long as you just upload quite a significant amount and then you do it correctly. But I guess like you guys have been talking about as well in the, the previous episodes, if you do affiliate marketing and stuff like that, you want to turn it into like a, a proper brand. Then mm -hmm. obviously I think quality definitely matters. So yeah, but yeah. Ron, you've got someone on camera recording now, right? Yeah, well, I made some changes. I, I have someone that recorded his face a couple of times. I was actually in the process of buying him a green screen. And I also hired a separate video editor to edit his videos, basically. But adding all those steps in, making the whole process basically more complex, ended up in like me uploading less videos. And yeah, I was very uncomfortable with the feeling because I like the video editor was taking two days sometimes or three days and then... Uh, the video itself was recording like way slower because he needed to like uh, adjust his setup and that kind of stuff stuff so now i'm more like 80 percent um quality how i always did it so it's basically screen recording with a really good voiceover and some basic editing and mm -hmm. for the really like high potential keywords with uh, good affiliate links and that kind of stuff we will that like 20 percent we will f i will focus on like with the face and that kind of stuff that's like the distribution right now so i switched a little bit uh, also, because what you said earlier, I see many opportunities out there to rank and I don't want to like uh, upload less videos because I need to wait for the face cam while the opportunity is there. Because I see so many keywords, like the video is ranking number one and the video is so shit, the voiceover is shit. And then even sometimes even the second position video is much, much better, has the exact same keyword, but somehow the, the shitter video still ranks. Like it's so mm -hmm. weird. Was so that one my, earlier yeah. uploaded then? Yeah, most of the time they're a little bit older indeed, but not, not always even. So mm. I, I adjusted my approach a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm leaning slowly more towards the quantity side, but still having like decent uh, quality, of course, with good information. Like that's still key of, of the whole search success, I think. I feel like a lot of things in life, and this probably falls under this as well, it's like our brains are wired in a way where we want to put things into the category of like black and white, you know, oh, either do quantity or either do quality. But <laughs> the, the further you, you go and the more you study, you start to realize that a lot of things are in balance, right? Everything in nature is in balance, right? That's what we want to do. We want to come into balance. So I think it's probably has to do a lot with, you know, how can I figuring out how can I upload more, but still maintain, you know, a good quality. Yeah. That's the, that's the real challenge. It's not hard to do super good quality. It's not hard to do thousands of videos per month, but how can you make 500 videos per month with amazing quality or like good quality, sorry. Yeah, like it's, yeah. A, it's like a mix between what earns you the most and like you need to balance it with your costs. And now I'm like, yeah, the, the whole face cam thing is more expensive, takes longer time. Is it outweighing the earnings? For me right now, not yet because I don't have enough data on those videos. Um, but like overall, it's a, it's a, it's a game you need to yeah understand for yourself. You need to play for yourself, and mm -hmm. also every channel is different. Again, like every niche is different. Mm. Um, but I'm also wondering, Yuri, like the current YouTube automation landscape, and maybe a specific search, but also like in general, like how do you see the future for that for the business model? Well, like I said, there are so many channels right now that keep getting crazy views. So right now, I I definitely think I don't know. There was one point, like maybe last year 
I was thinking maybe it's going to get saturated, like the the search stuff and the classic yeah. how-to channels. But I guess I'm wrong because right now there you can you can search for any keyword and you'll find a channel that's pulling a couple hundred thousand views a month. So yeah, I mean I'm still very very positive about it. Uh, Want to start more channels, keep it going, and yeah, as long as that invalid traffic thing stays out of our way, then yeah, I, I feel like it's just going to continue to be a to be a money machine. To be honest. I saw that yeah. story you posted on Instagram where it was like a channel has one video and it's doing some crazy like views. <laughs> it was so crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, that one had one video. We actually, I went with, uh, to Creatia with Hassel like six months ago or something. Yeah. And just for fun, like we were doing a detox. So we weren't on our phones much, this and that. And then we, I made one video, like we had a jacuzzi there, like how to turn off jacuzzi hot tub just for fun. <laughs> We upload it and then it's now ranking first as well. And that's just on a channel with like, <laughs> yeah. like zero subscribers. You can look it up, guys. I was the RPM. Zero subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was monetized. Zero oh, yeah, subs, no logo. Yeah. I don't even know the channel name anymore, but it is ranking number one. And that's just, you know, just for fun, like not even that trying. That cheeky so. monkey didn't There's tell me something. about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, you can look it up. I think he but, has a sign in. I don't have the sign into the channel yeah. he has. Yeah. He uploaded it. But, um, dude, AI. Yeah. It's everywhere. Jesus Christ. Artificial yep. intelligence, this, artificial intelligence, that. Clone your voice, clone yourself. Let's talk about it. What's your take, man? Because you, I know you've been experimenting a little bit with that. 100%. I mean, it's, I don't know. Like, it works. The only question is what YouTube is going to do about it, right? If they, as long as you maintain your quality, then I don't think there is much of a difference or it matters at all because people probably cannot tell or the voice is good. So it doesn't matter even if they do tell, but I wonder what YouTube is going to do about it. If they'll continue to monetize it, I think it's fantastic. Probably over time, prices for all the technology will go down a bit. So the voiceover is going to get even cheaper and stuff like that. But yeah, it's great. I mean, I'm actually in the process of uh, buying a channel right now that is using AI for the voiceover and the, the videos, like in my opinion, the, those voiceovers aren't that good. It's not like the premium 11 laps, 11 lap stuff. It's like more of the 2021 20, voiceovers, let's say. The TikTok and the retention stuff, yeah. No, also not the, uh, the TikTok is like the, uh, it's kind of like the iconic voice kind of thing yeah. now, right? But just more like robot sounding yeah, still. Yeah. Like you can definitely tell it's robot versus, hmm, sounds a bit off, but it sounds good. And the retention there is still like 50, 60% even on some videos. So I don't know. Maybe it depends on the, the niche and the industry, but it People definitely are maybe works. also getting used to it. Like the whole TikTok generation, let's say, they're used to <laughs> that's that bullshit voiceover. Like yeah. maybe if the story writing and the script writing is good enough and like the video editing and that kind of stuff, they're like, oh, wait, I know it's a fake voice, but still the, the story and the video editing is, is good enough to watch what's true, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. I'm not sure. But yeah, like I said, I think as long as YouTube monetizes it, it's going to be great. Yeah. And you have a Spanish channel with a, with an AI voice as well, right? How is it going so yeah, far? Yeah, but I, I, I cut it down. I talked right. to Hessel about it. I, my, my initial plan was the English channel. I'll just convert the videos into Spanish, $1 yeah. per minute. And that's, that's it. I'll just re-upload that video on the new channel, do researches in, do people search for this, do the other videos get views yeah. and stuff like that. But... I just uploaded a few videos, not that much, but then I thought, because I spoke to Hassel, he was like, yeah, the mistake I made in the beginning is thinking that in Spanish, they'll search for it the exact same way as in English. So like, como usar, and then yeah. uh, it's <laughs> like how to use <laughs> how yeah. to use the platform. But he uh, said that wasn't the case. So he said, yeah, I'll do uh, like <clears throat> research specifically for the Spanish channel. Yeah, And then I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not going to do that. Because yeah, I, I think yeah. he is also making the video separately versus just looking your yeah. English library and then converting it to from Spanish. Some weird country. Yeah, Colum Colombia, I think it was. Oh yeah, okay, is that not that weird? But yeah, I was gonna oh. say. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> gonna I, say I, I had a different, <laughs> different thing in mind. But yeah, I'm also experimenting with it. But what I do right now is like, um, my, I have a Spanish girl as well. She takes the the original footage, the original video. She cuts mm -hmm. off the audio. She transcribes. Uh, the video to a script, translate it to Spanish, and she records it from scratch with her own voice. And I let her check the YouTube search bar 
So she knows the English mm -hmm. term, but she's looking for herself, like how people are searching for it in English. And yeah, but so why far, you, yeah. Why would you, uh, why didn't you choose to let her redo the video versus just translating it directly with AI? Because in my no, opinion, the voice, the quality and stuff is good. Um, I don't know. I just thought like no AI, AI voice is better. That's what I, what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, fair. And like, fair. She, she then also can do the keyword like right away. So maybe she's creating more feeling with like explainer videos. Because mm -hmm. she's also saying like, I'm trying to match the Spanish voiceover exactly with the source footage basically. And the, the translations are not always matching the screen 100% of the time because some Spanish yeah. paragraphs are longer. So she's also mm -hmm. adjusting that, that it at least makes sense. Um, but I'm doing it now for one and a half week. Like a couple videos rang, but... Yeah, not no crazy results, but I'll, I'll give it some time and see. Yeah, that's the thing. It's always going to take a few months. I think Hassel, it took, what did he say, like a year or maybe six months? Yeah, a long but time. I think closer said, to yeah. a year. And that yeah. channel is at like 50 bucks a day, maybe. Yeah. Which coming hey, back to what I said. Bro. It was, it's now, oh no, wait, 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could be, yeah, sorry, a day, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to get to many channels that do like 3K up 5K, I thought it'd be a nice addition, but... And any now, other like, languages, just pass. maybe German. I was thinking like German, maybe. I'm not sure. Like, I, I didn't I try. I know it. someone tried Mandarin, <laughs> but YouTube is banned in fucking China. So it didn't <laughs> work. Right? That was correct, right, George? I think so, again. right? Yeah, go, uh, YouTube YouTube, and Google, dude, it, not not Chinese friendly for sure. No, but, but it um, makes sense. Yeah. I want to I wanna add a uh, But I know one guy, though. I think he's in China that has a channel himself. Just a search channel as well. Yeah. I guess it's, I think, it's accessible I think I know then. who you're talking about. Could be. I Matthias, don't know. right? Matthias, right? No, but he, no. It, it didn't work out in the end, I thought. Chris. The it, name is Chris. Banned. Oh. Okay. Different Maybe, guy. I don't know, I don't know Matthias, I think. <clears throat> Sorry, you know him. <laughs> Bam. He's from, Ch he's gave from China. Everything. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Sorry, about oh, I'm confused. <laughs> if that's him, I know who it is. <laughs> I will bleep it out. Or you not, gotta I blur it. <laughs> you gotta blur it and beep it. You gotta be mad. This conversation feels so but natural. I'm, I'm like. <laughs> but he's from China. He's not from China, right? <laughs> no, he's, he's not. He's from, from Sweden. Oh. Huh? You guys got me confused. <laughs> yeah. He but, lives in China. No, no. no we're talking just, about we're talking about different guy. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Right, right, Let whatever. me add my two cents about AI coming back to that conversation. Yuri, the article that I sent you um, from Google actually themselves. So this is a blog post um, because, you know, this, this conversation about AI is very trendy, right? Everyone is talking about it. Yeah. It's very popular and people want to know more like what's the situation with AI, right? And so instead of going to all these different random sources, I somehow stumbled upon Google's actual uh, search central blog about AI generated content, right? So I'm going to read a couple of sentences and you guys let me know what you think about it, okay? So at Google, we've long believed in the power of AI to transform the ability to deliver helpful information, okay? Um, Google's ranking systems aim to reward original High quality content that demonstrates qualities of what we call EEAT, expertise, experience, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Uh, our focus on the quality of content rather than how content is produced is a useful guide that has helped us deliver reliable, high quality results to users for years. And then they say here, when it comes to automatically generated content, our guidance has been consistent for years. Using automation, including AI, to generate content with the primary purpose of manipulating ranking in search results is a violation of our spam policies, okay? So Google has many years of experience dealing with automation being used in an attempt to game search results, blah, 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 blah. This said, it's important to recognize that not all use of automation, including AI generation, is spam. Automation has long been used to generate helpful content, such as sports scores, weather forecasts, and transcripts. AI has the ability to power new levels of expression and creativity, and to serve as a critical tool to help people create great content for the web. Bam. Bam. Yeah, it's a whole lot. I think about all of that... <laughs> The question is going to be, what do they consider as automatically generated content? As in, if you use yeah. like a video 
generator like NVIDIA or stuff like that, does that count or does it not count? Because you still need to put in the prompt yourself and maybe edit yeah. the stuff, edit a few things yourself. So is that going to count or not going to count? Because then what, what else zone. would they, like if that counts, what would they consider is automatically generated then? What do you think? Mm. I think difficult. I think it's about the whole like spam thing. So like we've talked about this one channel. I'm sure you you know about it as well. That has like you know millions of uploads or something, or like hundred thousand of uploads, and it's just a mm -hmm. simple. Um, uh, it's like they're aiming for search, but the answers are like in this text format, so you can yeah, clearly see dolphin. that it was yeah high, high dolphin, dolphin or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. So so it's all super like spam and like obviously it's not helpful. Like a content farm. Um, yeah, but my take. And I know I might sound like a noob or something, but <laughs> I think that these algorithms are designed to reflect user behavior. And if you primary, if you focus on making your content focusing on user satisfaction first, then the algorithms are gonna reflect that, right? So if you focus on how can I satisfy a user's need or question or something like that, and they find it helpful. If one person finds it helpful, then why can't a thousand people find it helpful, right? And I think yeah. that's how they they try to design these algorithms. If I had to guess, it makes sense. Yeah, YouTube is also following trends. Like after the Sam Suler guy, like the fitness guy that's exploding, YouTube is also um, recommending other more raw video styles channels. So there's like a certain trend going on, and YouTube pushes it out more because the trend is happening because people want it. So. It makes sense that YouTube is following audience behavior, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I guess time will tell. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the smartest. There's not much we can do, <laughs> right? The only, the only thing that could be annoying is if you go all in or like you start a full channel with AI or this and that. And then for now it's fine. But then in a year from now, they'll, they'll change their policies on it or yeah. they'll, yeah. If it gets out of hand. This and that. Maybe. Yeah. Like you don't know what, like I, like eventually, like there are tools now being made that you can like create a whole f movie with AI. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you can still see it's AI, got some bugs, you know, but like a couple of years from now, maybe you don't even need a video editor. You can just insert mm -hmm. a prompt that matches your voiceover and you're done. But like yeah. YouTube can the never best like tool, avoid that. Yeah. There, I think they're, uh, I'm not sure if you guys know the creator. I think it's Ar Aurelius Chin, something like that. Maybe I pronounced the name wrong but he uploaded like two videos uh called like this ai tool will create tutorials or this ai tool will create step-by-step -step guides so i was yeah. thinking that tool is going to make a full tutorial imagine you can you can tell it which video to create how to delete your instagram account and it will just in one click do that exact video if yeah. we'll ever get to that stage then it's going to be interesting because if <laughs> everyone has access to that tool what happens if we both put in the same video to make? Is it going to create the exact same video? Because then obviously if we upload all three, if we upload yeah. that video, we cannot all monetize it. So I think that's going to be interesting once that point is going to arrive, mm. which I guess it will, right? I think so as well. I think as we move further into this uh, synthetic AI world, it's going to become more normal, but as we can see what's happening with the Sam Sulik guy is that this raw, authentic stuff and this human thing is what we are going to crave for, you know? So if I had to bet, I would bet that the, the human connection is always going to be there. And even through the screen, you're always going to be able to tell. And as technology develops, as we have, you guys seen that podcast Lex Friedman did with, uh, what's his name? Mark Zuckerberg, where they were fully in, yeah, in, that's in the crazy. virtual reality. Yeah, it's really cool. Have you, have you seen that? I did not see it, no. Dude, they were in a metaverse, so, basically, right? Dude, they were in a metaverse, yeah. and it's crazy. It's so crazy. They were like, imagine we were doing this podcast, but instead of me looking at the screen like a 2D thing, you would be in these glasses and it would feel and you would see it as we were sitting in a room together. Yeah, really high crazy. quality as well. Like not the metaverse quality you see on YouTube, but like really like very realistic. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, but yeah, but th that that it's going that way. Like meta is making those glasses, like they will be public eventually. So yeah. 
But we have a couple of questions uh, on the story that I posted and the one that you reposted on Instagram. So we've addressed already a couple. Uh, so we've addressed the driving license one. The driving license one. Who put that in? That was me. <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> I feel like hassle or someone else gonna put yeah. some stupid question. Didn't um, they? Probably. Okay, so we talked about AI. Okay, so there's one about sponsorships. I think it could be interesting because I think mm-hmm. you've been doing more sponsors. So yep. uh, Yusuf asks, "What's the best way to get sponsored posts? Sponsorship manager, etc." I mean, that's kind of pretty easy. So what I do myself, a few of my friends as well, works for personal channels, basically any kind of YouTube channel. You just put a contact email in your video description as well as your about page on YouTube, and you just see which kind of emails come in. You can simply reply there, land the deal, or you can go the other way and you can reach out to brands yourself. Either just go to their website, grab their email there. But I feel like that will get you the wrong email. What I would do myself is... Figure out in which niche you are. So let's say you're a personal creator, you're a search-based channel, whatever it is, right? Figure out other channels in your niche, go to their channel, click on their videos, and see if they are doing any sponsorships with other brands. If they are, write down that brand and try and get their contact details. Email them. Say that you are a similar channel, et cetera, et cetera, because that way you know that they're already doing brand deals. So that is pretty much it. One thing that I could add to that, uh, I know one creator, personal creator, what he does is he emails and he actually has someone that does it for him. So he hired a manager, I guess, to do so. They'll just email a bunch of companies. He's in the AI niche. He'll email a bunch of companies and he'll simply let them know, here's what we've done so far with other brands. And then he'll link back to, to some videos that did pretty well. And then he'll say, we have X amount. So let's say 10 spots open for December. And then he just emails a bunch of them. Whoever says, yes, I want to be involved for December is obviously going to land the deal. And there you go. That's he fills out. That's how he fills out his entire calendar, basically, of videos. So every video he does is sponsored. Could either be a dedicated video, an integration, but he just emails a bunch of companies, lands the deal. And then from there on, he also follow up. So like if he did one video with them two months ago, he'll say, hey, this month, we have another slot open up for, and then the, the date basically. And then you, you can easily land new ones as well as keep working with the same ones. So that is how you can get them. But it works for any any kind of channel because my uh, my faces channels, I mean, there's a lot of emails coming and maybe you guys have that as well. So many of them are spam, but yeah. there are a few here and, here and there that will actually pay you decent money. My friend got, I think it was last week, he had four videos with a massive company and they paid 500 bucks per video and uh, outsource is like 20 bucks. So he paid like yeah, 100 crazy. bucks at most and made like 2K. And that channel yeah. isn't like crazy big, maybe like 20K subs. So that is quite some money you can the, make. That's, 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 that feels yeah, like right. one of those things that are like, illegal to know you know yeah, like, <laughs> if you can reach <laughs> if you can reach out to a company like cold outreach get them to you know do a sponsored whatever video for 500 and you outsource it for 20 it's like but how, how do you come up business. with the pricing like i had some some deals yeah. as well and then they ask like a price per video and i'm like hmm, let's check out what they're doing like calculate a little bit how much money they could spend and then it's like oh, 500 or 300 sounds good per video mm-hmm. like do you have a way for not really it, i don't really no not really i look at what company it is right so if it's a big yeah. company you can google like valuation or maybe if they've had their investment rounds yet or stuff like that if they did they obviously load it and they need to get rid of the money that's something that a lot of people don't know they have budgets set for each quarter or each year or whatever right now it's december yeah. let's say they still have a million left that they need to spend on marketing because their budget say so these pew, managers pew, pew, and stuff pew. will Oh yeah, I was gone. Yeah, now you're back for a second. Ah. Yeah, you're back. Now you're back. Anyway, I was saying that those companies they do they have budgets they need to get rid of. So yeah, I look at that, but mainly like you said as well, Ron. It's it's kind of just not totally random, but it's like "Hmm." I just (laughs) look at the companies and like, can you get five hundred bucks per video? Yeah, probably, and then you just charge five hundred. Could be two hundred. Could be a thousand. Whatever. I mean, obviously, there's amounts that you probably think, nah, it's not worth the, the hassle. 
because sometimes it is quite a hassle, right? But yeah, now if you outsource it, everything. whatever, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, then it's totally fine, whatever price, right? Uh, Shannon is asking if you had to start again from zero, what would you do? Great question. What would I do? <laughs> what would YouTube, you do? I guess, right? Well, I, I would do YouTube regardless of whatever. I would log myself back in this room where I am right now <laughs> and just Full circle. record a ton of videos. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's the best way to do it, to be honest. Yeah, it because is. then you are in charge of everything. It's fast. You don't have to wait for people that deliver the videos and stuff like that. You know how to record the videos. And even if you don't right now, you just do it for a week and you'll know exactly how to do it. It's not that hard, right? So I would lock myself in, record videos all day, like between five and 10 a day. Upload them. Next day, wake up, do research, create the videos, upload them, basically keep that going. And then after a while, just look at the at the analytics, see which keywords do well, which don't. Do that for three months, and then you'll have a better understanding of how it works. And then you just make a lot of videos, and it will work out. So I would so basically do the exact same thing, to be honest. So at what point do you outsource? At a certain like income level? or I guess that depends on your situation, right? I mean, now, like knowing what I know and... I could say like, as soon as you can do it, probably do it. Keep your costs low in terms of how much you spend in personal life. Outsource right away while keep while you keep also recording yourself. I would look at it in the way of how can I get, <clears throat> excuse me, how can I get the most, most amount of relevant videos out? If that is just record yourself, just do it yourself. And then you want to make the switch to outsourcing, but that will make you go back from, let's say, 10 videos a day to just free, I would probably outsource those free, but then also use your own time to still record yourself until you're able to fully outsource the same amount that you were doing yourself. Yeah. Makes sense. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. That's, uh, to add yeah. to that, I think it's, it's not a big mistake I made, but because I, to be honest, I was recording those 10 videos a day or five, whatever for like six, seven months straight. So it was kind of going crazy. Yeah. So I was totally fine with outsourcing. But I started to upload much less than when I was in my prime, let's say. I did like 300 videos a month myself, and I was growing like crazy. So if I would have kept that going up until this point, like three years in a row every month, 300 videos, I would have probably been making more money now. So then it's just like, is it worth it to do so versus the money you're making, I guess? So yeah. another question that I kind of thought now, because a lot of people listening to the podcast are anywhere from like 35 plus, let's say, right? Um, a lot of them have their own businesses or they have a well-paying job, right? And they have some money to invest right away. You know, they, they're like... I don't, I don't have, you know, <laughs> time to work on this from early morning to the evening because I have other responsibilities, but I do have, let's say anywhere from three to $500 per month um, to start an automated channel and to set like leverage cheap labor from, you know, countries like Philippines mm -hmm. or something. What would you say to those people? Like how, how should they go about it? And what, what would be some of the most like important mistakes to avoid as well? Mm -hmm. I would say kind of a new insight is what I got. First thing, find a team that is good, but very, very cheap. Because right now, I feel like the prices I'm paying that were maybe normal back in the day or whatever, when I got started with my team, are even a bit on the higher end. And I feel like there are so many channels out there right now, and I see them upload like a thousand times a month, 1,800 times a month. Surely they're not paying like five bucks per video because they'll be investing more than 10,000 bucks. So I do think, and I, I talked to a few followers of, uh, of mine on Instagram as well two days ago, and I asked them how much they were paying for an eight-minute video, a three-minute video. Some people were paying just $3 for an eight-minute video and just $1 for a short video. So mm -hmm. I guess a mistake a lot of people could make if you're not doing the work yourself and you're outsourcing, let's say you pay five bucks for one video, which is a decent price, I would say. You can do 100 a month, but if you spend that little bit more time initially upfront to find a cheaper team that is still good for just $1 a video, you can upload five times as much. Yeah, I would say that's one of the things I would now really focus on if you've got uh, more of a limited budget so that you can get more videos out, which also requires you to do more keyword research, which means you'll get better at it, better at it faster. 
That way it just speeds up the whole process versus someone that just finds a team within a day, pays them 10 bucks per video, but then can only do 50 a month, for example. So that's something I would really pay attention to if you're just going to start now. So more quantity basically in the beginning. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because when you're, I think, I mean, obviously you get, you do 60 per month now, George, how many do you do? I've paused a lot of things. I'm reflecting, man. I'm reflecting. I'm paused, but I, I, I did. I was doing three hundred per month. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, tough one, right? Because for both of you, it works. So yeah, but I did two hundred in the beginning. Like I, mm -hmm. I changed ah, up my strategy yeah. like five months ago. So mm -hmm. I did a lot of volume in the beginning. So the thing is yeah. i was i was growing more with this with a little bit more high quality and still a little bit on the quantity side so that's why i made the change but both mm -hmm. can work i think it all depends on your keyword research like the classic yeah. one but it is yeah. true but then when it comes to that i think if in the beginning you do so much of it you'll learn faster right yeah for sure if you do like 30 per month starting you, you it will probably take you like let's say it takes you 300 keywords on average to become very good just yeah. making this up but then it's going to take you like 10 months versus the other person just one month yeah, yeah. yuri i have a question it's yeah, sure. it's 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 from my own personal thing so i'm now trying to go for the most the the most competitive keywords for the most like saturated topics we're talking how to delete instagram accounts how to do all of that right type in insta how to the first 10 mm -hmm. results that's so what i'm trying to do or what i'm experimenting with right now and i also posted this in our school is i'm trying to because i have a teleprompter now <laughs> game changer i don't know if you've tried have, really? you, tried a have you tried a teleprompter no Bro, after this conversation, go into Amazon and please you get yourself. <laughs> please get yourself a teleprompter, bro. It's mm -hmm. it's a game changer. And anyway, so what? Yeah. And a tablet. Yeah. Why so a what tablet? I'm trying, like a, like one of those Android Galaxy Tab thingies. I don't know. I paid yeah, like hundred for the text. It reflects in the teleprompter where you can read off. Ah, I got you. All right. Because you're basically, you, I bought the, the, the tab or the, the tablet for one specific reason, which is the teleprompter. So it reflects and then you can read and there's a camera. It's great, bro. You're reading the thing. You mm -hmm. like, I recorded a, um, one and a half thousand words script, which is like 15 minutes, like 13 or something minutes in one take, bro. Like no stumbling, nothing. It was great. Anyway. So with this new thing, I'm now thinking what I've tried to do, and I'm going to send you after this podcast a link, is for those super high competitive, super saturated keywords, I'm making super high quality video myself. No AI, no outsourcing. I'm just recording it myself with a face, super nice lit environment, great quality audio. And then it's like straight to the point. In this video, I'm going to X, Y, and Z, step one, so three. Thank you for watching. Bah. And then I also have the recording of my phone, which and I did like five videos myself so far just to kind of give it a try to see how it is. What do you think in the long term, in the next two to three months, would that video be pushed to the top? Would those videos be pushed to the top? Would they rank? Or am I doing something completely dumb? Well, it's a hard question. Yeah. But now that I, I mean, there's so many factors that come into it, I guess. But on those topics, I would say it's a bit more unpredictable, like how to lead Instagram. Because in my opinion, your added value to that topic cannot be that much, right? I mean, it's just click here, click here, click here. That's it. So the only thing you could potentially add in value is a better voiceover. Maybe, like you said, you appear on screen yourself. But that's about it. But then on the other hand, Trevor Nace and Guide Realm and those channels... Yeah. They're just guys themselves that do indeed film and they show it. And I'm pretty sure they rank very high for the majority of those kind of topics. So for those topics, I'm not 100% sure. It is a bit unpredictable to me. But what you're doing, like you said, if you do a lot of high quality stuff and you genuinely make the best video on topics where there's more value to add, I think that's one of the best things you can do, right? In my opinion, that's what Matix Media does, yeah. what Central Media does. They make like genuinely good content. They show up on screen themselves. They've done quite some research, I assume, for the video. They know all the steps and then they show it. And that way they add more value to the video than someone from my team or whoever, right? That just quickly get to see the topic, 
they just whip out the 10 minute tutorial and then that's that. So yeah. yeah, I do think if you're making better content itself, it's great. But with those Instagram topics, not sure how many value of how much value you can add to it yourself. I maybe have an idea for you, George. Maybe there are very, very popular search terms amongst women. You film for yourself and you open your first button button open. Maybe <laughs> they will watch that. <laughs> exactly. Maybe will they watch that more than the other ones? Hey. You would be hey. you would be surprised, Ron. Big brain stuff, of course, yeah, but you would yeah, be surprised. Yeah. Judging by my DMs on Instagram, <laughs> I'm I'm better exactly. off making content for the gay community rather yeah, for yeah. women. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yuri, bro, oh, really? Yuri, bro, I'm not even kidding. My no. DMs, bro, it's all like because I have appointments at it now, right? So. She goes, hey, thanks for the follow. Why did you follow me? Every third DM, because you're so sexy, because you have a nice, <laughs> because you have a nice pretty face. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Maybe well. I should sell. You, don't you guys have, instead. I don't know if you guys have uh, females on your faceless channels. I'm not sure yeah, about, I I, you guys get comments as well. Like your voice is so beautiful and people will like, send emails and stuff to just to they don't really? even see someone on screen it's just their voice and they'll go crazy i haven't had have that have happened before now i have so no. many of them dude the the internet is such a horny place it's crazy man it's it a is. scary place but also a great so. place to make some money it is a great place <laughs> to make money for sure if you know how yeah all right well um let's round it up um uh, about maybe a little bit about the personal thing like you know dude you're young you're making all this money you're traveling what's next for yuri what what should we expect what do you think i'm not sure <laughs> i wish i knew no but i don't know like i guess from the outside it always seems so crazy and stuff like that it, it kind of just i don't know obviously still do it if you're not here yet but it's not that crazy but that could also be because almost everyone I know does it. I don't speak to a lot of people that don't do it like this. So it kind of became normal, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just, yeah, just keeping the channels going. Just want to build some more channels, dive into affiliate marketing a bit more. Yeah, just basically expanding. Can we but talk about that? Can we, can nothing we, major. Can we touch a little bit about affiliate marketing? Because you mm -hmm. said you want to do a little bit more about that. Because I think that could be an interesting topic as well. Sorry, guys. Not no. rounding up just yet. <laughs> I'm not, I've got a story I can share that I didn't share before. Yes. But please. I started experimenting with affiliate marketing in April this year. I think it was with Faceless Channel, but also myself. And yeah. I think in June, July, I made like $7,000 in commissions with like five videos. And they were extremely simple to make. So what I did... There's this YouTuber called Hamza. You guys know him? Yeah. He has like 2 million subs. I was watching one of his videos and he mentioned he, he launched Adana School, which is a community and course and calls and this and that classic online program these days. And it costs 500 bucks initially as a one-time upfront payment. And then from there on, $100 a month recurring. Yeah. And he launched an affiliate marketing program with that as well. And he would pay $250 for every person that you would get to sign up to that product. But I was thinking, okay, $250 per sign up, that is that's pretty good. It's, it's a one-time fee, but still, $250, that's great. He has 2 million subscribers. Surely there must be a few people searching for uh, whatever, right, regarding yeah. that product. So what I did, I bought the product myself, very important to this whole story, I feel like. If I didn't buy it, I don't think I would have been able to make those commissions. So I bought the product on a Thursday, I think it was. I started using it for a week. So I started seeing, okay, how does it work? Uh, do people message me, community? Uh, how many calls does he do per day? What does he share? Stuff like that. Then after seven days, I made the first video titled like, I tried uh, Hamza's Adonis School or Hamza's 599 Adonis School. Uh, this is what happened. And I started this on a brand new channel, by the way. So none of the money I made was for my for my audience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Brand new channel. I bought like four or five K subscribers just to get some more authority. And I uploaded that first video and just right away it started to get views. Like like a couple hundred views per day, I feel like 200, 300 views. 
So I was like, okay, this works. And then the next video I made was pretty much the same thing, same video. You can, you, you can all find it, by the way, if you search for Hamza Donna School Review, you'll be able to find a channel. It's called Yuri Hoff, I think just Hofwegen without yeah, my I, I found it, yeah. middle part. Yeah, just like five, six videos. So the yeah. second video I made, uh, Hamza Donna School Review, and I simply shared what the product is. So I showed them how it works. Simple screen recording, just me in the corner. Yeah, this is the community tab. This is where you can find your courses. They have this course, this course, this course, and this course. Hamza does calls on this day, this day, and this day. I joined one of them. He mentions everyone by their name in the beginning of the call. Super cool, this and that. So I just explained the product. And then at the end, I just said, yeah, it's a pretty good product. In case you're interested in joining, click the link in the description. That is it. So it wasn't crazy. And then after those two or three first videos I uploaded, the first two days were kind of quiet. Got like a lot of clicks, like 100 clicks a day, no sales. So I was like, hmm, <laughs> is it going to convert? And then I think 23rd of June, first sale, $250. Bam. And I was hyped. I was like, damn, this works. Pretty Let's simple. Go. And then the week after that was crazy. Some days I had like free sales. So I was making like 750 a day just with that program itself. And then over time, it kind of died down. I think, I'm not sure how much the best month was, but in total, it's like $6,600 in commissions with just those few simple videos. So that shows like if you have a search phrase that people search for, no yeah. competition, you make the video pretty simple, targeted traffic, it converts like crazy. And you don't have like crazy views, by the way, for those of you listening. Uh, like if you, no. if you search up the videos, like the, the most popular video you have has 5.8 thousand. Uh, you mm -hmm. literally posted just six videos. And yeah, it's like 3K, 5K, 1K, 1K, bum. Yeah, yeah, but it's, uh, it's all about seeing the opportunity. Like you see yeah. him launch a community and then you're like, hey, I can probably make a video about it. And like, that's where, the, where everything happens, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Pretty cool. But yeah, the, I think the beautiful part about this one is that technically anyone could have done it. Like you guys could have done it. Anyone watching at home. I mean, maybe if you're a, a, a woman, in this case, not because the product is targeted towards uh, guys. But maybe you could even as a, as a woman do it. And then you would say like, I would love a guy if he would do X, Y, Z, and then whatever the result would be from the product that Hamza sells. But almost I would love a guy anyone if could do it, right? I would love a guy if he signed up with using my link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably works. So, <laughs> But yeah, like you said, it shows the power of like finding opportunities, you know, because affiliate marketing yeah, it's 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 a great example if you can go out and be like a cheeky monkey and find you know an opportunity that has targeted search uh and and not so many videos and a really good pay payout golden yeah yep. plus it's and just it so goes, good you upload the video once i mean you guys know but you upload yeah. the video i think you you ron always say that like george is like very hyped about the affiliate sales and you're like yeah, it's just nice extra, like forget about it. <laughs> and then the email comes in. That's kind of what I have with those as well. Yeah, it's nice. Like I have it with the American Express Air Miles. Like I just got one yesterday, one yesterday as well. And mm -hmm. I spend it on flights. Like it, it's a nice adding up, you know? Like sometimes you just forget about it. You yeah. have that video online and it just stays yeah. there online and you, you get those clicks and eventually one will hit. So that's but nice. But that affiliate, that affiliate is only in, in our country, right? Or no? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it's, pretty a, it's, sure. a Dutch, it's a Dutch review, mm -hmm. but there is a way. No, but even to... even the the link. Yeah. If I would promote it in English, I could still get the signups. Uh, no, you need. Uh, yeah, like, that's you need um... need the US uh, Amex mm -hmm. card. But by the way, it's possible to get it. I'm uh, trying to get it uh, like the American Express in the USA because your your points multiple is way higher when you spend on it, and the welcome bonus is also way higher for the referral. Plus, you can wait, make like crazy amount of videos about it but for now yeah it's only limited to the netherlands because it's like all separated mm -hmm. per country yeah i'm not uh, gonna compete with you then <laughs> i guess i'll try that the us one yeah, as you well. better don't i, I want to fly for free so <laughs> yeah i wish i could do that ron That's has great. been feeling really good with those affiliate commissions from the <laughs> from hey maybe yeah, we have nice. some dutch listeners they maybe the next time you look up right. your video, there's gonna be another guy who is like, I'm gonna. <laughs> oh no! Who I guess they could. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Well, Yuri, anything? Uh, anything you want to add before we go? No. I mean, it's almost been an hour, right? 
Yeah. It's good, to, uh, good time. to have a chat. Dinner time. <laughs> thank you so much for your time and energy. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, listening, subscribing. I'm going to leave all of Yuri's info down in description. Go give him a follow. Tell him he's a sexy motherfucker. And we will see you <laughs> in the next <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> ciao. All right. Ciao. <laughs>